Thank you, Victor, and uh, good morning, everybody. Thank you very much for coming, uh, especially the community members that we have in the back and some of our neighborhood community officers. Uh, as Victor said, I'm Superintendent David Ridzik, and I'm the unit commander of the Community Partnerships and Engagement Unit that oversees the Neighborhood Community Officer Program over the entire city. Um, very excited about the announcement we're going to hear to make uh, today. Um, you're going to be hearing from several speakers, including the Chief uh, Mark Saunders, our Deputy Peter Ewan, as well as Professor Doug Thompson from Humber College, who have played an important role in shaping the Neighborhood Community Officer Program that you're going to see and hear about today. You're also going to be seeing the three videos that we had produced that help uh, explain exactly what the Neighborhood Community Officer Program is about. Like I said earlier, we do have some of our Neighborhood Community Officers, some of which you'll actually see that are in the video or are here with us today, as well as some community members that are very familiar with the Neighborhood Community Officer Program and have been working closely with uh, those particular officers uh, for several years now. And they are going to be available after uh, this media conference for you to speak to. Uh, and we'll identify them afterwards so that uh, you can uh, reach out to them. But first and foremost, I'd like to start off by uh, welcoming Chief Saunders to come up and say a few words. Thank you, Superintendent Redzik from the Community Partnership and Engagement Unit. Um, and a special thanks to the members of the community that are here. Thank you so much because this is what it's all about. And also to the neighborhood community officers. And thank you, all the media folks that are here. We often hear from the public that building partnerships and improving trust with the police are extremely important to them. It is very important to the Toronto Police Service as well, as we have learned that trust and partnership are the key pillars in the success of our community-focused policing approach. Being community-centric is a commitment that we made with the way forward. We know success is about trust. It's about building and keeping trust in our day-to-day -day community interactions. I'm pleased to be here today to talk about the Neighborhood Community Officer Program and the enhancements we've made to help more effectively serve communities across the city. Uh, I'd like to show you three very short videos which will tell the story of the program and how it has played out at the street level. If we could please play the three short videos. Always. The two sexes either change as a positive or continue to be negative. Police officer used to walk with me, and at some point we got into the cars and just became reactive. And then the labor officer program was involved. The labor officer program was developed to try to get officers interest with the neighborhoods. But we started at a very low point. Trust within the community hadn't been that low in years and years. We just started meeting people, showing people that we weren't just there for their service. How is everything? Are you still going to the five minutes? Oh, yeah. Where are you guys today? Is decreasing. We're working hard at that. 
And the only way we can continue is by us having relationships with our community. <coughs> As a neighborhood officer, when I started the position, the only thing that had to the parents would say, don't talk to them, they're bad. So we try to reach as many kids as we can. That was amazing. I met her through the Northern Bike Race. I found out when we went mountain biking, we got up there and she's like, Miss, I can't ride a bike. So we worked with her and she learned how to ride a bike. Camping came into my life just before like, I you know, started experiencing the challenges that came into my life. So I have school today. <laughs> As a neighbor officer, they get to see us on a regular basis. If you start now and you're positive and you're respectful, kids will remember that the rest of their lives. And when you do that on a regular basis, then kids, kids thrive. Because we all want to feel that we're needed. We all want to feel that we're being supported. She took her time, dropped her kids, and Fran to make sure she was there. It's just nice to have to know that someone actually cares, someone who's not related to me, I blood. Have great videos. These videos are available on our website today and help tell the story of the impact our neighborhood policing program is having. We are also grateful for the ongoing work by researchers from Humber College to support us and help inform the evolution of neighborhood policing in our city. And we're pleased to have Professor Doug Thompson, who's here today, who'll speak a little bit more about the work that they have done to help us uh, get better at what we do. By now, you know that we're all very proud of this program and the Neighborhood Community Officer Program and the real differences that it has made right across the city. This is why it was so important for us to continue to enhance it. The enhanced pilot has uh, initial deployment of 44 Neighborhood Community Officers we will now be expanding this enhanced program to provide the enhanced program to a total of 127 neighborhood community officers. Deputy Chief Peter Ewing will come up later and talk a little bit more about that aspect. Torontonians want a familiar, trusted police service focused on community safety and reducing crime through collaboration, partnerships, engagement, and empathy. This is the goal of the Neighborhood Community Officer Program. Practically speaking, neighborhood officers deliver on this in a few ways. They communicate and they get to know the community in, in person with individuals and as well as groups. This could mean meeting community members for coffee like you saw in the video, attending local schools, getting to know local business owners and attending community events. The community is able to recognize their officers because they're visible and present in their neighborhoods. And most important, they are accessible. Neighborhood community officers will continue to work together with communities and agencies to address public and community safety issues with an informed understanding of the complex needs specific to each neighborhood. These officers have stepped up and I'm very proud of the commitment uh, to build the community ties and the relationships and trust needed to make this city safer. The success of the program also depends on our communities. They need to both know about and engage with this program. We need to keep talking and sharing the information. Making this program work benefits all of us. We've created a section of our website dedicated to the Neighborhood Community Officer Program. The website provides background on the program and information about officers with specific communities, and I encourage you to visit the site to learn more about this program. We've also created a hashtag, Together We Are Toronto, to share stories about the positive impact working together in our communities can have on this city. We hope that you consider retweeting or resharing the content on your own social media platform. I want to thank the community members who have participated in the initial and enhanced pilot programs and to the officers that were quick to volunteer and ensure this program is a success. The work continues on the Neighborhood Community Officer Program, but I'm very proud of the progress we've made to date and excited about the future of the program and the real difference it will continue to make in the lives of the people that we come across across this great city. I'd now like to ask Deputy Chief Peter Ewing to come up. Good morning. Thank you, Chief. Uh, as you saw the videos and you heard from uh, our chief speaking, uh, this program started in 2013. 
And as observers, we ask ourselves, are we doing this right? And it's not for the Toronto Police Service to say it's doing it right. So we went outside and we partnered with Humber College, and they have been working with our, our officers and the communities, and they came up with some concrete enhancement to make this program a little bit better. So I'm just going to, I'm going to highlight some of the en enhancement, and moving forward, all the neighbor officers, community officers in this city will be operating under the same guidelines. First is a standard mandate. What is the mandate of our neighbor community officers? They need to know what their jobs are. And so the, it basically it's a job description. That has been, we consulted with the community and our officers, we came up with a concrete job description. Number two, we need training. We just can't put our officers into a community and say, go work the communities. We gotta give them specific training. I'm gonna highlight a couple areas for you. Working with vulnerable groups, homeless, homelessness, uh, mental health. They need to understand and appreciate the issues. Problem solving, dispute resolution. These are some of the things that the neighborhood officer, community officers will be getting a one week specific training on the human aspect of policing. Number three, timeline. We often talk about police officers being transient. We just don't stay in the neighborhood not long enough to build that trust. Trust is very important. So in consultation with the public and our officers, we believe a minimum of four years. These officers will be working in these neighborhoods for a minimum of four years to build that trust. Lastly, branding. The public wanted the neighborhood officers to be easily identifiable because they, don't, they cannot differentiate between a priority response officer, a ETF, ETF officer, or a neighborhood community officer. So as a result, we made some small changes. So when they walk in the community, they, the, they, the, the neighbors, the, the kids, the residents can identify these uh, neighborhood community officers with the branding. And if you turn around, Kathleen, uh, in the back of their hat, the caps, it says neighborhood officer. And also the vehicles that they're driving, there will be very clearly distinctive marking denoting neighborhood officers. And one last feature I wanna highlight is connectivity. Each one of our neighborhood officers will be giving a cell phone and is connected officer. What does that mean? That means communities can co contact our neighborhood officers virtually 24 seven, that contact. And you know, it may be just a simple call for referrals, for advice, but our officers are there 24 seven to connect with the community. So these are some of the enhan enhancements that we have put in. And as, as of next week, all our officers, our native, na neighbor community officers will be moving forward with the same enhancement across the city. I mentioned earlier about Humber College uh, helping us and I wanna thank them because they've been with us since 2014 continuously to evaluate our program, speak to our officers, speak to our community members. And so I like, at this time I'd like to invite uh, Professor Doug Thompson for Humber College to share with all of you some of his findings about this program. Thank you, Peter. So Humber College was asked by the Toronto Police Service to evaluate the Neighbourhood Officer Program four years ago. Last year, we presented our results that showed very strong community support for the program and gave the police our recommendations on how to improve the service. The Toronto Police Service implemented most of these recommendations, and we are currently conducting surveys in select Toronto communities to find out the community's attitudes and opinions about these enhancements to the Neighbourhood Officer Program. We're also conducting surveys of the officers themselves to find out their opinions and attitudes towards their changes to their roles. The surveys of the communities and the police will be wrapping up in November 2019, and our final results will be published next year in 2020. So far, from the data we've collected from the Toronto communities, we've come up with several key themes. Members of the community in which the enhanced neighborhood officers work strongly support being able to identify their officers. People feel safer in their communities with the neighborhood officers there and they feel less threats from crime, gangs, and gang violence. 
And critically, community members see the neighborhood officers as part of their community, and they are far more willing to talk to these officers. The results from surveys and focus groups of the officers themselves are also very promising. The officers strongly support the new branding as neighborhood officers. They, they, they like their new cell phones, and they feel they're being very successful inside the communities in which they work. The research that we've been conducted with the Toronto Police has been a very exciting opportunity for Humber and the research team. I would like to thank all the community agencies and community members who have assisted us in this research and hopefully will continue to assist us in this research. I'd also like to thank the Toronto Police Service and in particular the neighbourhood officers for their assistance in allowing us to conduct the research and this research has been independent and accurate. It is uncommon for academic research recommendations to be taken up so quickly by a government agency and then to be invited back to conduct further research on the results of this. And I'd like to thank them all. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Thompson. And, and folks, uh, this concludes uh, the formal part of the media um, press conference here today. I'd like to remind you that we do have our neighborhood officers as well as community members that are familiar with the program that are here to answer any questions you uh, would like as well, as well as other senior officers. So thank you very much once again for coming out, um, and I hope uh, you will ask some questions about our program. Um, you said that it was four years for them to actually be in the neighborhood. Uh, what is the, the, the amount of qualifications? How many years on the force do you want to actually see them in, like on the force before you would consider them for the program? Well, certainly uh, we have a job profile for the neighborhood community officers, uh, which we have, and, uh, and they have to be a, um, certainly an experienced officer and has demonstrated competence in working with diverse communities, professionalism, understanding, compassion, and as, as well as being a police officer. We, we need these officers that want to be in there and they want to work with the community. So we, there's a selection process that's very string, stringent, very, very critical, and uh, the unit commanders of, of our divisions have been given that job profiles and a profile to select these neighborhood officer, community officers. Yes, are you looking at increasing the amount of training that they get? Yes, I spoke about uh, there's a one week uh, training, that's 40 hours, and every year they, they will go back for additional trainings to meet the community needs, and I, I highlight as a number of training uh, syllabus such as uh, problem solving, such as working with diverse community, such as working with vulnerable groups. So these are things that these neighborhood officers will be getting training in. And one of the new things that the neighborhood officers, community officers identify is dispute resolution. So we are going to give them additional training on resolving disputes because once we see that on, on a daily basis when they work in neighborhoods that neighbors often don't get along or people don't get along and we, this is a drain on police resources. So the neighborhood officer, community officers are trained to, to deal with, to deal how to resolve disputes before they escalate into larger issues. Will the additional 83 officers be out in neighborhoods as of today or when will we see the full the full implementation role is next Monday, so all these enhancements will be put in because we had a uh, six-month pilot project in eight neighborhoods in different divisions across the city, and we selected them uh, to for the enhancement pilot. So this is the pilot has been concluded, and uh, as of Monday, all existing neighborhood community officers in the city of uh, Toronto Police Service will have this type of enhancements moving forward. Can you give us a sense of the sort of average day of a neighborhood officer? What, what kinds of events are they going to? What are the hours that they're working? The well, one of the things that I, you know, there are a number of enhancements. I give you some key highlights. Uh, one of the enhancements is based from feedback from the community and from the, from the neighborhood community officers that the hours are not fixated. They're not rigid. They work according to what the community needs are. So if there is an issue in certain area, 10 o'clock at night, they're not going to be fixating saying, I, I work day shift and I, I can't come. So uh, average day, they'll be problem solving. Uh, they'll be visiting uh, different, uh, different businesses, community centers, schools. If the school, you know, there's issues in the schools, they will be 
forming relationship, partnership. But never, but we never forget that we're police officers, so public safety is always going to be first and foremost. So they will participate in some crime management initiative, such as you know, uh, break and enters in the area, or even lo or, or local traffic issues. So their day is to, and every month, and I, I'm going to mention this to the, to the folks here, that they will be submitting a report, very fulsome report, to myself, talking about how many people they have referred, how many people they have identified at risk, how many community partnerships they have built. So all these things on top of their po regular policing duty. So their day is quite, quite full. Uh, quite full. In the three video <clears throat> that we watched, there was a woman that said um, an officer dropped everything and was spending time with her kids, but left um, to go tend to that community member. Can you share that story with us? Well, the officer's right here. You want her to share that with you? Yeah, <laughs> officer, I think she's a little shy, but uh, I think this young lady has now gone to university. Uh, she's been working with 42 division neighborhood community officers, and uh, I know Kathleen has made a great and huge impact in her life. Kathleen, are you here? You don't, don't hide. Come on. Don't be shy. Um, yeah, Stella, she just had a, she had a graduation. She was unable to have any family members attend, so she asked if I could go. So I made it down. I have two kids myself, so I had to drop them and then go to the graduation. So that's what she was referring to. Officer, did you say your first and last name and your rank? Yes, sure. It's Kathleen Peterson, and my badge is 5490. Okay, thank you very much. That concludes today's conference. Uh, some of the officers and some of the uh, higher command will be available uh, for one-on-one -on -one interviews. Thank you.